Welcome back to How to Flip a Classroom instructional video number two. In this video we're going to talk about the very very basics of how you actually make one of these videos uh, just like the one that you're watching right now. I've narrowed it down to four really main things that have to happen for you to make one of these videos. Number one, you need to get the information that you want students to see in this video onto the screen of your device. Now there are several different options for doing this. Personally, I'm using a tablet PC. Uh, this is a computer that allows you to write on the screen. And you are seeing exactly what I'm writing on the screen right now. You could use a tablet of any kind, uh, like an iPad or a Windows Surface tablet or a Samsung tablet or any other number of tablets that are out on the market right now. As long as you can get the information you want onto the screen, uh, that'll work just fine for you. And probably what is the least expensive and maybe most available option is just using any basic computer but attaching some kind of a writing device to it. Um, I have one that's called a Wacom uh, Babu tablet. Uh, this is the company name right here. They have a bunch of different tablet devices so just connect to any uh, personal computer that basically turn your computer into one of those tablets. Um, the only other thing that you need is some kind of program that you can actually write in. I've always just used uh, Microsoft OneNote, pretty simple. Uh, some people use Microsoft Word, maybe even PowerPoint. Any program like that that you can use to uh, get all the information you want up onto the screen will be perfect. All right, let's move on to the second of the four main things that need to happen before you can make one of these videos. You need to record your screen and some audio to make this video. This is called uh, screencasting. There are many, many options for this. Uh, if you're using a computer of some kind and not an iPad or a tablet, uh, Camtasia is one of the more popular options. That's what we have here at Red Rocks. Uh, something that I used to use, which was uh, either free or very inexpensive, was uh, called Screencast-O-Matic. Very, very simple program. And if you happen to be using, say, an iPad or some other tablet device, I would just look in their store, in their app store, for a screencasting app. Um, there are many of them available, free ones, uh, ones that you have to pay for. Uh, Screen Chomp is a popular one. There's one called Show Me. Uh, there's one called, I think, Education or something like that. Um, there are a whole lot of them out there. You just need to pick one that works for you. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is finding an app that has uh, built-in editing capabilities. Uh, both Camtasia and Screencast-O-Matic do have that. So you're able to uh, edit these videos, make them a little faster, um, cut out all the mistakes that you end up making. <laughs> Which brings us to item three. I think that editing the video is actually a pretty important step. I keep it really, really simple, but I like to edit videos in a way that uh, kind of moves things along quickly. There isn't a lot of empty space. Hopefully keeps people from uh, getting too bored and falling asleep while they're watching. Uh, I just edit within Camtasia myself. I also used to edit within Screencast-O-Matic. If you want to get a little bit more fancy, uh, Camtasia is pretty good with that, but um, there are plenty of video editing softwares out there available. If you're not happy with one of those or the editing that comes with your app, just look for a video editing software or video editing app. Now the very last thing that has to happen for you to make one of these videos for your students is you need to post this video online so your students can watch it at home. Again, I use Camtasia and that has the built-in ability to post things to uh, YouTube. Another option that a lot of these softwares offer is they can actually save your video as a file. And there are many different file types for videos. And once you save your video as one of these file types, um, you can post it online to maybe your own website or your school's website. I know a lot of schools use Blackboard or Desire to Learn or some similar website like that. Again, I use YouTube. I like the fact that YouTube is very popular. After they finish watching my video, uh, maybe they can click a link to a similar video if they didn't like what I had to say. Um, all of that is just personal preference, but you do need to find a way to post your videos online for your student. Now before I let you go, I want to give you video quiz number two which is write down what devices and software you will use for each of the four steps mentioned in this video. So write that down and bring it to class. And that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we are going to be specifically talking about how to use the Wacom tablet with a laptop to get your writing onto the screen of your device. That would be specifically step one that we discussed in this video. And video three will be pretty specific for Red Rock instructors because we have the Wacom tablets and laptops. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.